Welcome to Animal Stories for Kids. If you like our stories, please give us a five-star rating, subscribe to our podcast, and share it with your friends and family. If you're listening on Spotify, you can support the podcast through listener support. Plus, check out exclusive show-related content and join the community at patreon.com slash animal stories for kids. And now, it's time for our story. Once upon a time, there was an Asian palm civet named Ndari. Ndari, the Asian palm civet, lived in a tropical rainforest up in the tall trees. She stayed up high in the trees to stay away from predators and to be closer to the fruit that grew up at the top of the trees. Ndari, the Asian palm civet, was a very cautious civet. Every time she would move around the rainforest, she would look around her, not once, not twice, but she made sure to look around at least three times to make sure she was safe. And because she did this, she moved a little slower through the trees compared to all the other Asian palm civets. While the other Asian palm civets her age were moving fast through the tree branches, Ndari would stop every once in a while to make sure where she was going was safe enough. Once she found some fruit on a branch, she would just stay there until she had her fill. But the other civets would go to one branch and eat some fruit, then go to another branch to eat more fruit, while Ndari just quietly sat on a branch and nibbled at her food. There were two big reasons for Ndari, the Asian palm civet's cautiousness around the rainforest. Ndari had some experiences in the past that made her concerned for her safety. One experience was from the last monsoon season where it got so rainy and windy that Ndari fell from a tree and was swept away by the scary cold river that ran through the rainforest. She could still remember how cold and scary it was in the river until she hit a mango tree and climbed up to safety. The other reason for Ndari the Asian palm civet's cautiousness around the rainforest was because of an old grumpy tiger that lived across the river. The old tiger once chased Ndari up a palm tree and forced her to jump off into the river, where she learned that she could swim better than she thought, but she still didn't like that a scary old grumpy tiger chased her up that tree to begin with. And because of these two traumatic experiences in her life, she was too afraid to do most things around the rainforest. Whenever the other Asian palm civets would have fun going from tree to tree and eating fruit, Ndari, the Asian palm civet, stayed put on a branch and just watched all the other civets enjoying going around the trees and trying different kinds of fruit while she just nibbled on her own fruit. She was used to it, and all the other civets knew her to be like this every day. One night, As all the other Asian palm civets were back from eating all the fruit they could eat, something terrible happened. A troop of macaques found and started taking over a big area where the coffee shrubs were. They were all trying to eat all the coffee berries on the shrubs. Ndari, the Asian palm civet, was sitting on a branch, nibbling on a piece of mango, when she saw the macaques coming and picking at all the coffee berries. Oh no, said Ndari. What could these macaques possibly want with the coffee berries? She saw all the macaques going for the good ripe berries that Ndari loved to eat. Ndari, the Asian palm civet, looked around, and she didn't see any of her fellow Asian palm civets. They were all just minding their own business. Hey everyone, said Ndari, the Asian palm civet. These macaques think they could eat all our coffee berries. Why are you just hanging out. Let's go chase them away. One of the other Asian palm civets said to Ndari, I think we're okay. We all ate so much fruit that we're nice and full. I can't even move even if I wanted to. The other Asian palm civets didn't have a problem with the macaques eating the coffee berries because they all had their fill of fruit. But Ndari the Asian palm civet was a slow eater and she didn't eat as much as the others, so she was hungrier than all of them at this moment. She was the only one that cared if the macaques ate all the coffee berries or not. 
she looked at all the other civets and said, Well, you all might be full right now and not care, but when you get hungry later and you want some yummy coffee berries, you won't be able to find them because these macaques are eating them all. The other civet said, We'll worry about it then. Right now, we're just enjoying watching the stars in the sky. And as they were talking to Inadi, the macaques began devouring and eating up all the coffee berries. And Inadi, the Asian palm civet's heart sank as she saw all the last coffee berries being picked out. Inadi was still hungry, and now she couldn't even eat the coffee berries that she so wanted to eat. And watching the macaques eat the berries made her want to eat even more. But she was too late. And her stomach was empty. And she needed to eat. Then, as Ndadi looked around the moonlit rainforest, she saw a jackfruit tree. With a lot of jackfruit just hanging, ready to be picked and eaten. The only problem was that it was a cross a rushing river, something that Ndadi the Asian palm civet was not excited about. And not only that, she saw the old grumpy tiger sleeping right by the jackfruit tree. What should I do? asked Ndadi to herself. I'm so hungry, but I can't eat the yummy jackfruit tree unless I face my two biggest fears, the river and the tiger. Nadi was scared, but her hunger was much stronger than her fear. So Nadi the Asian palm civet took a deep breath to prepare herself to face her fears. And she did something unheard of in the whole rainforest. Nadi took an empty durian shell that was still sticky and very smelly on the inside and she held it with her teeth, bearing the stench as she walked over toward the cold, rushing river. I'm gonna use this durian shell to protect myself from the tiger, said Ndadi the Asian palm civet to herself while holding the durian shell in her mouth. And if the tiger wants to bite me, then it's gonna have to bite through the stinky, sticky shell first. So Ndadi went off with the durian shell in her mouth, and she went towards the cold, scary, rushing river. She clung to the low-hanging branches, shimmying across logs and broken pieces of branches in the river. And by accident, she fell into the cold water, but she held the durian shell up high above the water. And after facing her fear of the cold, scary river, she came up out of the water and arrived on the other side. She was wet and cold, but her hunger and all the excitement in doing this incredible stunt was giving Ndadi the ability to keep going. And she walked slowly up to the jackfruit tree that she saw. And as she expected, there was the old, Grumpy Tiger, who got up from its sleep. Ndadi hid behind the durian shell and started walking up closer and closer and closer to the tree while the tiger was watching as this silly civet holding a durian shell was walking up to it. And as Ndadi, the Asian palm civet, was inching closer and closer to the jackfruit tree, she tripped on a rock and lost the durian shell that went flying in the air and hit the tiger right in its face with a big splat. The old tiger shook its head and sneezed and wiped its face on the ground and some bushes nearby. And after the old grumpy tiger shook the durian shell off its face, it looked at Naughty, the Asian palm civet, and started laughing. <laughs> Naughty was caught off guard. 
What's so funny? She asked the tiger. <laughs> well, 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 said the old grumpy tiger. You are the first civet I've ever seen using a durian shell as a shield. <laughs> then the tiger looked and pointed its nose toward the jackfruit tree. My, oh my, what a vivid. You are the bravest little Asian palm civet I have ever met. And then the tiger moved back a little and said, I believe there's a prize waiting for you up in this tree. Naughty the Asian palm civet said, Wait, what? You're not going to eat me? The tiger said, I don't eat brave little critters like you. Go on, enjoy. You earned it, little warrior. Ndati, still in disbelief that the tiger wasn't eating her, slowly walked up to the tree and started climbing it while watching the tiger. But the tiger didn't move. It was telling the truth and let Ndati go up all by herself. In fact, the tiger went back to sleep. Ndati, the Asian palm civet, picked the jackfruit and sat on a branch and started eating it with the delicious chunks of fruit just falling on the ground as she started digging into the fruit. And her usual little nibbles now became big bites. And in almost an instant, her appetite grew. And she kept eating and eating. And she picked another jackfruit and began eating it too. And then she realized that all her fears were leaving her, as if she wasn't afraid of anything anymore. Well, she was still concerned about tigers and the river, but she wasn't as scared or as cautious because she was able to face her fears. And because she was able to face the things she was afraid of, she found out that she didn't have to be so afraid of them anymore. And she didn't have to look around every time she moved up in the trees, which now allowed her to eat as much fruit as she wanted, as fast as she wanted. And the Asian palm civet lived happily ever after. The end. The Asian palm civet is also called the common palm civet, toddy cat, and musang, and it is a viverid that is native to Southeast Asia. Viverids are small mammals that are usually medium-sized with long bodies, short legs, and bushy tails. And viverids can be found in Africa, India, and Southeast Asia in forests, shrublands, and grasslands. And some species of viverids can be found in savannas or wetlands. They are closely related to the mongoose, weasels, and fossas. The Asian palm civet is called a palm civet because it generally eats the palm flower sap. And it's also sometimes called a toddy cat because when the palm flower sap becomes fermented, it becomes palm wine and it becomes a sweet liquor, or some people like to call it toddy. And because it lives in this kind of habitat, they sometimes call it a toddy cat. Asian palm civets are omnivores, and they can eat small animals like rodents, lizards, snakes, and frogs, along with other insects and smaller creatures. Asian palm civets are also known to eat fruit, especially the flowers of palms, mangoes, and coffee. In fact, Asian palm civets are known for coffee berries, and some people look for the coffee beans that have been ingested by Asian palm civets. As the coffee bean makes its way through their digestive system, it allows the coffee to have a unique flavor that people will pay a lot of money to get. The Asian palm civet is a nocturnal animal, and it feeds at nighttime to avoid predators. 
The Asian palm civet has a long, stocky body and is covered with coarse hair that's shaggy and generally gray in color. It has a white mask across the forehead and small white patches under each eye and a white spot under each nostril with a dark line coming in between the eyes. Asian palm civets come in many different colors from brown, gray, white, black, yellow, and tan. They can live from 15 to 20 years, they weigh from three to 10 pounds, and they can be from 17 to 28 inches tall. They have very pointy, sharp teeth. To be clear, Asian palm civets are not cats. They are viverids, unrelated to felines. The Asian palm civet weighs about half of the weight of the African civet. They have large eyes, which helps them find food at night. And they have strong claws that help them climb trees. The Asian palm civet is generally solitary, which means they're on their own a lot of the time. Asian palm civets are arboreal, which means they spend most of their time in trees, but they also have no problem hanging out on the ground. Have you seen a real-life Asian palm civet before? If you have, where did you see it? If you want to write to us, ask your parent to email us at animalstoriesforkids at gmail.com and tell us what you think of our stories. We would love to hear from you. Thanks for listening to Animal Stories for Kids. If you like our stories, please give us a five-star rating, subscribe to our podcast, and share it with your friends and family. If you're listening on Spotify, you can support the podcast through listener support. Plus, check out exclusive show-related content and join the community at patreon.com slash animalstoriesforkids. Until next time, bye!